and I am like paralyzed in fear. It is the chicken man delivering the chicken and he is like peering through the blinds and I'm in full panic. I'm like sinking into the couch like one of those 2000s like anti-marijuana campaigns. Hi, my name is Zachariah and this is the time I ordered the most disturbing party-sized platter of wet chicken wings. Hi on mushrooms. Back in the day, I used to really love psychedelics. My favorite memory of doing shrooms was with my best friend, Kira. I'm looking at like the back of the chocolate bar and I'm like, oh my God, okay. There's eight pieces. One piece is like a microdose, you're kind of feeling it. Two pieces, send me on my way. So I said, let's rust our roots this stuff and let's go, go, go. So we get home, I take two pieces of the chocolate and I'm starving. Cause it's like lunchtime at this point and we haven't eaten all day. So I was like, we really should just order some chicken or something. So I go on a delivery app and I'm looking and I'm like, okay, this place looks great. The photos are awesome, but like the sizes are weird. Like it wasn't small, medium, large. It was like B1 bomber. It was fighter pilot. It was renegade. It was these World War II like jargon military terms. And I was like, I don't know. Let's just get a B1 bomber of lemon pepper and a B1 bomber of Buffalo. And I'm not really feeling it. And I'm greedy when it comes to doing psychedelics. If I'm not feeling it right away, then I'm like, let's just take more. Let's just take two more pieces. 15 minutes later, it like hits me. And I'm like, oh shit, we're locked and loaded. We're in the middle of this trip. Like the lights start trailing. It feels like the living room is breathing and it's fun. We're watching music videos. We're giggling, we're laughing. And all of a sudden we hear a knock at the door and I am like paralyzed in fear. It is the chicken man delivering the chicken and he is like peering through the blinds and I'm in full panic. I'm like sinking into the couch, like one of those 2000s like anti-marijuana campaigns. Thank God my best friend here, she speaks up. She calls her boyfriend in the other room. She's like, Jay, please go answer the door. He does the exchange with the chicken. The chicken man leaves and I shit you not, he has two party sized platters of chicken wings. Like these are platters you would bring to a graduation party and I'm nauseous. I'm like, get those away from me. I'm peeking on mushrooms. I'm not eating a thing right now. So we're like, let's go outside. A new environment, it's gonna feel fresh, it's gonna feel breathy. And my best friend Kira, she picks up a hula hoop. Now Kira is an above average hula hooper on any day of the week. But when she is hula hooping, peeking on mushrooms, it looked like an Olympic event. It was just stunning. The, the toss into the air, the theatrics. I am literally sobbing about how beautiful this hula hoop is going. Tap me in coach, okay? So she tags me in, I get the hula hoop and I'm going for it. I'm lifting it in the air, I'm tossing my head back and forth. I feel like Sia in the chandelier video. I'm kind of starting to work up a little bit of a hunger at this point. So I'm like, let's just go back inside and revisit these chicken wings. She opens up her platter and it looks amazing. It's lemon pepper, it's crispy, it's fresh. I'm so, I'm in love with it. And then I open mine and it's buffacue. They are soggy, they are wet. It looks like a bottle of buffacue has just been poured all over it. I am already sweaty. I am already dripping from my nose. I've been crying on and off for what feels like an eternity. And I'm like, I can't put wet on my hand now. I'm already wet everywhere else, okay? And I'm just disgusted by them. Would you be willing to trade a buffacue for a dry rub? Zach, I literally have like 40 wings here, enough wings to fill a suitcase. Just take a goddamn wing. And I was like, oh my God, you're so generous. Thank you so much. I feel better. I feel like I'm kind of coming, kind of riding into the, the wave of this shroom trip. But at this point, the vibes are just not it on the inside. We just feel so much better outside. But the sun is going down at this point. And the only thing we can really do is go on a walk. She lives near a cemetery, but the cemetery is a sketchy place at night. Like you just don't know who's gonna be there. We spend about two hours in the cemetery. We're dancing in the moonlight. We're dancing around thousands of dead bodies. It's a spiritual experience. There's light trails. It's just awesome. And we don't really encounter anybody, which was surprising. I'm just like so excited about the night that we call one of our mutual friends. I'm like, hey, we just walked around the cemetery at night and I was so scared, but it really wasn't shady at all. She was like, guys, you are the shady people doing drugs at the cemetery late at night. Like you are your own fear. And that realization I still sit with today. And at that point I was like, you know what? The trip is over, I'm done. I'm gonna go lay on her couch, grab a pillow and a blanket, and I'm gonna scroll on my phone, have two mild panic attacks, listen to the rain on my tent sound machine on my phone, and try to fall asleep. And to this day, it was still one of the best days of my life. Moral of the story is, always go for a dry rub when you're doing mushrooms. Tales from the...